Hey there, everybody. I'm super excited to give you guys a first look at the Micro Shift Sword uh, range. It's an all mechanical group set, so cable actuated drailers and cable actuated brakes. Hallelujah. I think in some ways this is a response to Shimano Q's, which stands for creating unique experiences. Can I just say that I think Micro Shift won the name game here. Shimano's going to have to change the name from Q's to guns or something for good ends. Good, good ones. I don't know. I kid. Sword comes in two flavors, one by and two by. Uh, the two by version wasn't out yet, but I did manage to get my hands on the one by version last Friday. Quickly installed it on the bike and took it on a few rides. One bike comes in a couple of crank lengths from 165 to 175 and two chain ring options, 40 tooth and 42. And that pairs to their existing 10 speed 11 by 48 cassette. The double crank set, which I don't have, comes in 4831 as well as an interesting 4629. And that's paired to an 11 to 38 cassette. Supposedly the rear derailleur is more or less the same. The only difference being the derailleur cage, which you can apparently swap. It's got three bolts in the back so you can make a quick switch. I didn't get a chance to do that. So we're just going to talk about the one by version, but hopefully soon I will get a chance to play with the two by version. So how is it so far? I've managed to mount most of it. Um, let me explain here. I've got it on the Money Bikes Hachita here and I didn't have a cable stop. So I had to order one online that is en route. So I've been running it in friction mode with these down tube shifters. I mean, what, what did you expect guys? I've already done some hacky tests with it. I put it on the Sklar, tested out our Uno shifter works great. Looking at how much lever pull it takes to move the derailleur, I'm guessing that it's closer to the more modern one-to-one -one pull ratio than it is to the old school two-to-one ratio. I might do further compatibility hacking later on. Uh, if you're into that kind of stuff, let me know in the comments below. So let's get into it. I'm gonna talk about first the good things and then some of the not so good things. The, the good or rather the great uh, specifically is the redone brifters. The brake and lever shape are just awesome. They're very reminiscent of GRX brake levers. So they're kind of wide, flat and angular. Feels really nice and substantial in the hand. One thing that's kind of tricky to describe is the finish of the lever. It's got this kind of satinized feel to it. It's supposed to have an aluminum core with some uh, plastic outer to it, but it feels super solid. You'll notice also that the routing now goes under the handlebar tape. This was a big sticking point with older Advent X brifters that had the external routing. Now it goes under the tape, super nice and clean, a lot easier to put your bag on the handlebar. Another interesting change about the brake lever is the pivot point. It's moved a little bit lower, providing for greater cable pull. And I have to tell you so far, uh, using it with the disc brake in the front and a cantilever in the rear, it just feels great. Really easy to get strong braking from the hoods as well as the drops. I think these had to be the best like non Shimano, non SRAM brifters I've tried personally. I think it would be awesome if they just did a plain left and right brake lever for people that want to do weirdo bike builds to give us more options than like the typical texture levers. In terms of the ergonomics and the aesthetics and how the braking feels, it's an absolute win. Feels like a quantum leap from the previous brifters. Let's talk about the rear derailleur. Overall, it looks a bit more refined. Uh, the clutch actuation is done with a knob rather than a switch. Again, supposedly the cages between the one by and the two by are interchangeable. And just for funsies, I did try the one X rear derailleur on the Sklar with my wide range double and it didn't work. The very inexpensive Acera had no problems, but the one by wouldn't work. Maybe the two by specific cage would work. Not sure, uh, we'll have to see. But to be clear, the one by rear derailleur seems to work best in a one by drivetrain. No surprise. Another huge positive about uh, Microshift's sword is the front derailleur, even though I don't have one to play with, uh, insofar that it exists. Good front derailleurs are in short supply, so I'm stoked to see them still support 2x, even if you don't use it with the whole uh, sword system. It's good to have front derailleurs in production for your own DIY needs. Okay, a lot of good so far, so let's talk about the not so good thing. You'll notice on the Hachita, I am not using the sword crank set. Personally, I think 40 and 42 tooth one by systems, especially with just an 11 by 48 is a bit over geared for bike packing where there's any climbing and you're actually carrying things. It's probably enough if you're riding unloaded or not in mountainous territory, 
but I think the gears could have been lower. I, I get it, it's one thing to not have to come out with a giant pie plate of a rear cassette, but I feel like they could have offered chainring sizes in the 36 or 38 range, just so you can make the most out of that 1148 tooth cassette. I know what you're thinking, Russ, that BCD looks identical to GRX, so couldn't you take an aftermarket chainring, say from Wolf Tooth or something, and put it on the sword crank set? I thought that too, so that's actually what I tried. I removed the Wolf Tooth chainring from my GRX crank and, and tried to install it onto the sword crank. And here's the thing, while the BCD is indeed identical, the, the shape of the tabs of the actual chainring are not. When I tried to put the Wolf Tooth chainring on here, it would lay flat on two of the holes, but the tabs would interfere with how uh, the crank arm was actually machined. Personally, I think this is a bit of an oversight. I don't know if it's like a patent thing, but if you want a smaller than 42 tooth uh, chain ring, you've got two options. You can either file away the tabs so that the chain ring will fit uh, flush with the sword crank set, or you have to get a new crank set. Both those options are, are not great. The 2x version looks promising, but again, this is where I think they could have gone a little bit more experimental, gotten a little bit more weird, maybe offered a wide low 4024 old school mountain bike double option for those that are going to do some hardcore uh, touring with a lot of gear on their bike. I think the 4024 paired with their 11 to 38 would be an awesome sub sub compact setup. This is where I think sword is a bit of a conundrum. Is it meant to be an all mechanical GRX or a budget alternative to Shimano? I'm stoked that there's still an option for us that still want to run uh, cable brakes. It's a definite hole in the market in terms of new bike components. I do wish, however, that they got a little bit weirder and offered gearing options that didn't mimic, you know, the, the bigger brands. Like just don't be a cheaper version of what's out there, you know, get weird, do something new. Again, I want to stress, I didn't get a chance to test the shifting performance. You know, I was running it friction down tube. But if they're anything like the old Advent X Brifters, then they'll be perfectly reliable. I'll do another follow-up video in a couple of weeks once I get the cable stop and actually get a chance to test the shifting. But I wanted to share my first impressions. I think it's a huge upgrade, big quantum leap from the previous iterations, and I'm, I'm really excited to try out the 2x version. So if you liked this video, found it helpful or informative, and appreciate that I didn't just you know reprint the press release, then hit that subscribe button, or better yet, join us on Patreon. It's what keeps the lights on and, and lets us create bike content from our weird perspective, apparently. As always, everybody, keep the supple side down.